Hey friends, welcome back. I've got an, a garden update for you, a very exciting one. I hope that's a plane and not thunder. What I wanted to do was show you around my garden and have a look at things that I didn't get to show you in the last garden update slash tour. Still trying to find a name for that, by the way. Don't know if we can do like Shai's cack tour, because it's like a cactus in a, never mind. It's cack time for a cack tour. No? Okay. First thing that I have to show you is it's so beautiful. Look at what's bloomed. Oh my lord. How gorgeous is that? So you'll actually recognize this little gymnocalyceum. I planted it in the big tall green planter that had the purple pearl, the colorata, the calico kitten, portalaca. As you may remember from the last garden update, I had to shuffle the Echeveria purple pearl forward. It's a little bit boring and I'll just show you in a minute because um, I, I just had to do some rearranging and it just meant that this cactus couldn't fit in there anymore and had to move to another pot. So it's moved here. Holy moly. I've been waiting for these to pop because these blooms have been looking like this, but look at them. <laughs> it's so pretty that I could cry. I want to move on with something else in my garden, but I just, I can't get over how amazing this is. And this only happened during the day. I came out here this morning and this was not in bloom. It's just so, it's so precious. Okay, I have to move on with something else. <laughs> to be honest, there's really nothing as exciting as that, but I will take you around my garden. I'll try and show you things that I didn't show you in the previous garden tour update thing. Okay. All right, this um, is an Aeonium. Well, it's two different kinds of Aeoniums. This green Aeonium here is one that we bought from Cactus Country. And look at the amount of dead leaves that are just waiting to be, I mean, oh my God, so satisfying. I think this is very cute. For me, this looks better stressed than it does <laughs> when it's actually doing really well. And same with these. I mean, they're like little, they're little succulent roses. Who doesn't like that? Tim actually mentioned that he saw some scale on the stems and I cannot for the life of me see any scale on these stems. So I don't know if you can see it, let me know, but I cannot see these things. Yeah, that's, that's not scale. That's just marking on the trunk. Mm, how pretty. So we're at this pot again. I've placed, meh, this was in the pot that I redid with the big Opuntia and um, I've moved it here since. I didn't put it in this spot here, even though this is a big gaping hole in the arrangement. I didn't put it here because I want to put something else here. I'm thinking like a dark green Hawarthii of some sort would look really good. Maybe I can like move this and then place it here. I think that'd look good. Look, let's just have another look at this while we're here just before we move on to something else. Oh my lord. This cactus family here is looking rather sad and I think it's full of bugs as well. See these little white things? I have no idea if that's mealy or not. It doesn't quite look like, I mean it probably is. It probably is mealy. Anyway, this is getting, I haven't been looking after this at all and you can see that this is actually quite squishy which it shouldn't be but that's what happens when you neglect a plant i think it's a little dry those are my assumptions i think it's a, a little i think it's a lot dry there's so many things growing on it yeah that's mealy that's mealy little beasts not entirely too sure what to do i was just thinking do i just dump it in a bucket of water i don't know that could also kill it going from one extreme to the other although that's what desert plants are built for right the extremes you're actually meant to when you water a cactus you're actually meant to flood it less frequent shallow watering and no wait be less frequent with the shallow watering and more intermittent with like absolutely flooding it with water is apparently what you're supposed to do because that mimics the conditions of the desert i should add that this probably only applies to underwatered cacti also i totally encourage you not listening to me without further research and taking into consideration your own climate conditions i'm a hobbyist not a botanist with my own specific microclimates and watering habits yeah so i've just i've just got to figure out what's got to happen i've got to give these babies there are so many babies in here I 
I've just got to figure out what to do so that they have room to grow. I'm going to have to put them in another pot. But this balcony is getting so full, I would have no idea where to put that pot. Anyway, I could go on about this forever. I will think of something and we will save this. We're gonna save this plant together. Ow, this is Sedum Pat's Pink. I'm beginning to really not care for Sedum Pat's Pink. Why you ask? They almost grow like a weed and I just, I don't love them as much as I used to. They're, they're not looking the best and maybe that's got something to do with it, but they used to, like they get a lot of scale and they attract mealy, probably because they bush out like this. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm really not sure what to do. We'll think of something. Okay. Moving on. Here you will find a big gaping hole in this planter where two Sempervivum gold nuggets used to be. Yes, that's right, they rotted. And I'm very sad about that because they, they, they were gorgeous. I mean, these Sempervivums didn't rot at all. I can't remember the name of these ones. I think they're like Sempervivum Pacific something. Really lovely color when they're not all closed up like this. But these ones did not rot and my gold nuggets did. So I'm, I'm, thoroughly sad about that. I've like placed this here strategically to see if like just to see what it does because I'm thinking of moving these queen violets around and placing this somewhere in the middle amongst amongst like a ring of queen violets I think. I don't know I feel like it just needs a pop of pink in there. Thoughts? I quite like the rainbowness of this pot. It almost has every single color. It just needs a little bit more red pink in it. This is an Echeveria Morning Beauty that is getting thoroughly squashed and can probably come out at some stage. You may remember that this square pot had a very bushy portalaca triple tree that was supporting this brilliant Echeveria Miranda, which I think is coloring up. That's all I ever hoped for. Anyway, the portalaca triple treat had so much mealy that I decided to cut back on it. And I cut back really hard until it's just a couple of stumps here. I did save a little bit of green though but I did also go to the nursery and find this portalaca grandiflora portalaca grandiflora and the flowers on this just you wait look at this the flowers on this are just spectacular I want to die just looking at it it's so pretty so I'm thinking of popping this plant um, in here which I think will look really fantastic with the Echeveria Miranda. You're coloring up slowly and beautifully. Yes, I'll give you a bit more time. You can stay. My Bougainvillea is slowly getting some flowers. I am so thrilled about that because I did complain about my boogie not getting flowers in one of my earliest videos. But there's, it's, 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 you know, it's getting there. Got another one there and another couple of flowers just peeking out there. I'm sure we'll grow. We'll just give it a bit more time. What else? Everything in this pot looks great so some space has opened up because the um a couple of the lip bottom leaves of the echeveria blue metal have come off and i'm assuming that this Holdonus crest is starting to lean a little bit more forward this kalanchoe i don't know what this is doing these two kalanchoes i don't know the specific name of them but these two were cuttings from my cousin's garden when i cut them out from her garden they were a spectacular red very very stressed i'll put a picture up of what they're meant to look like they're meant to be way more compact and red than this well that's what i was hoping for but they're not so these I still believe in these. They may just need to move to a different spot. This Crassula Shandy never straightened up. Nope. Uh, and I'm just going to let it do its wacky thing. You do you, Shandy. You do you. I think everything else in this pot is looking pretty good. Let's talk about this pot. This pot needs redoing. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do yet, but we'll probably do a video on it. The These are Echeveria Santa Luis that have brilliant colors, but they're looking a little bit hammered by the summer sun. That's okay. They'll bounce back. I've totally forgotten the name of what these are. They're related to Echeveria Elegans and they're crossed with something else, but I can't remember. I can't remember what. I was kind of hoping that these would pop out and fill the pot, but they haven't. So I'm trying to think of other plants that can kind of like fill up this little planter here. I'm not sure if I like this tricolor in here. I'm not sure. Got a couple of things going on here. This is Aeonium Sunburst, and I think it's doing okay-ish considering that it's been super hot, very elevated 
on this balcony, so it probably receives stronger sun than anything else. I really wanted it at the top though. I don't know, I might move it. Um, the This is Sedaveria Letizia. Did not know that Letizia's were summer dormant, which would explain why this is looking so tired and crappy. Probably be fixing that up once the weather starts cooling down. Oh, this is quite nice. This is Echeveria Sion. Suyon. Suyon or Sion. I know someone named Suyon, so I'm, that's what I'm going to call it. Echeveria Suyon. Look at the color. Pretty nice, huh? And this planter this planter here definitely needs a redoing this uh is a, cr a crassula this is an echeveria bluebird one of the strongest plants in my garden honestly like look at that yeah this planter is looking a little bit crusty in some ways and look at these sempervivums that just closed up completely let me show you this planter because i didn't go into great detail about this planter i just talked about this jade in my last um cactua cacti cactua video so this tree for some reason was leaning over this way and last time we checked in it was leaning over that way and now it's leaning over this way again so i've just got to figure what i want is for it to be like up like this not like this up like this not like this and i do not want this jade to bush out I do not. I want to bonsai it. I want to be able to see that trunk all the way through. Uh, so there will be some trimming. That needs to happen. Let's take a look at what I have underplanted the jade with. So there's some stuff. This used to be bright pink and it's blued up from all the rain, which is fine because it's still a beautiful color. This is an Echeveria Hera, this big one right here. There's also another Hera over here. Hera and Terra. This one here next to this rock is Echeveria longissima um, and there's a nice cluster of those over there. We have what I think is Sedaveria marcus which are kind of spreading all over this planter which is nice I mean sure would love for them to turn a different color but you know maybe it doesn't need to because there's so many different colors in this pot already. This is a Minima cross lolensis I believe. Minima crosslolensis and look at the babies. This is all from this was just one plant when I bought it. That's all lolensis babies over there and this crest. How amazing is that? This is a beautifully look at those leaves. I love it so much. This is a portalaca pizzazz. Portalaca pizzazz. It did fill out a little bit more towards the edges of this pot but I had to cut it back because of mealy. I think I got everything. It looks pretty good. Now I'm just waiting for it to flower. Yeah, need to think about rearranging a couple of things in this pot like this euphorbia which is stunning is just hiding behind all of this crassula. I don't like that at all. So maybe we'll do a, a rearrangement of that. This sedum is looking shocking. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll need to think of another plant that can go in there because that's just, um, that's, that's, that's on Struggle Street. Ah, look, some more little sweet flowers in this. Um, I can never remember the names of these cacti off the top of my head. So I'll pop it up on the screen for you. So this is a, um, I don't know. You've got some very sweet flowers over there. Very, very nice. A little sweet gymnocalyceum, a red one that I would love to see grow bigger. And that's another parodia. We've got a big parodia family. We've got this big parodia family. And then this one here. Oh, did I show you? I should have shown you. Hang on. So this is now leaning completely off the balcony, which is great. It just needed a little bit of water because we hadn't watered it in ages and um, some sunshine. And it's now leaning, it's, it's sort of leaning towards the sun now. And look at all these little babies. Look how cute they are. Fabuloso. I'm, I'm waiting for these two flowers to pop. These are the ones that didn't fall off while we were planting them. <gasps> oh, well, there's more. There's more flowers that are going to bloom. That's amazing. Cute little arrangement down here, right at the base of a Pringlei. Such a shame about this balcony wall. It's like nice desert plants, really ugly balcony wall. I've been thinking about covering it up with something. I just don't know what yet. I don't know if I should get like some, like a wooden trellis or something like that and just pop it behind and then maybe something can vine all the way up around the balcony wall. So I'm not getting this like very gray box. I have no idea what this succulent is, but it's lovely. Echeveria elegans, which is like, just seems to be the bread and butter of the succulent world. If you want something to pup and bush out, go for an elegans. This one hasn't, but this one has. 
This is an Echeveria Elegance Clump with a bronze delight right in the middle there saying hello. Fastest growing little clumpers in terms of Echeverias in my opinion. But anyway, back to this pot. I do like the tri-colour here. I've forgotten the name of this agave. Probably, this pot could probably do with some top dressing actually. So we might have a think about that. A spectacular monstrous against uh, the not so spectacular grey box wall. This has grown so much since we first bought it. And you can kind of see where that lighter green is. That's all the new growth. It just shot up over the last few months. Wild. Right, so this is what I was talking about earlier. I had to push the purple pearl and the Colorado forward so that the leaves of the agave weren't going to squash them. And once I did that, there was no room left for the gymnocalyceum. Doesn't matter. Found a good home. Let's look at the gymnocalyceum just one more time. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's closing up for the evening. <coughs> we are in the cactus corner. Grey ghost. Yeah. A woolly blue. I cannot remember off the top of my head what the name of that was. This is here. <laughs> uh, this is an agave blue glow, which is not blue anymore. You can see that the roots are kind of coming out of the bottom, so that is in desperate need of a repot. So we've got to get to that someday. Not someday, we've got to get to that soon. I've forgotten the name of this one. Look at this. This is a... I can't remember. I can't remember what the name of this is. Tim is way better at the cactus names than I am, so when I'm editing, I'm going to ask him and I will put the name up for you on the screen. But look at the um, it's like an S shape. I like it. Another Pringly Eye, we think. This is an Ivory Curls that we got from Cactus Country. I think this is maybe our second trip to Cactus Country. We got this. All the burnt leaves on the bottom are like the leaves from when we first got it. So I think that when we brought it back, it got sunburnt and it adjusted because all of the new growth is pretty much perfect. Agave Ivory Curls. Pretty nice. Let's just see what's going on on the cactus shelf. Agave Americana in a Talavera pot. This is really nice. I do, I would love for one day to be able to put these in the ground, but it will have to go in a pot on my balcony for the meantime because Sydney housing prices. This, is this a double Pringly eye? I'm not sure, but it needs a hell of a lot of weeding and one mealy that needs to be removed. How dare you? Go away. Hey, listen, friends, I can feel a few drops of rain. It's probably nothing. Okay, yep, I can feel a few drops of rain, so I'm going to wrap this up now. Hope you enjoyed that little cactus cact time. Don't know if that's going to stick. Like, subscribe, all the things, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Hey, hey, look at this. The second one bloomed. If that's not the definition of spectacular, then I don't know what is.